Hi, I'm Jeff Hajek, the owner and founder of Election. This video is part of my lean training system. It was originally released as a DVD a long time ago, but times have changed and the look of some of these LTS videos is now a bit dated. The content is still spot on though. So rather than just discontinue the line, I am posting the majority of each of the 36 videos here with the remainder available at Velaction Videos. That's our video service where you can download a wealth of supporting content and watch subscriber only videos. I recommend subscribing and hitting the notification button if you want to make sure you don't miss any new content. I would also really appreciate if you would hit the like button if this video is helpful and you want to see more content similar to it. The like button helps us get found on YouTube, but it also lets us figure out where you want us to put our future effort. Now enjoy the free version of this video. Hello, my name is Jeff Hajik. I am the owner and founder of Election Continuous Improvement. I'd like to thank you for coming to my countermeasures training today. Because this presentation is presented over a, a webinar system, some of the animations get a little bit erratic when they're coming across the screen. It's nice and clean on the PowerPoint presentation if you decide to purchase it for using in your own training. But just understand that it is not going to show up perfectly because it is a recorded webinar. And, and the second point I'd like to make is that this is a copyrighted uh, this is copyrighted material, so please don't record it or distribute it, but it is available for purchase on my website, as I said. So let's get started and start talking about what countermeasures are and what they can do for you. So obviously, you know, what we want to do today is we want to get a good understanding of, of how countermeasures can make your life better and what they're used for. And we want to learn about the basic countermeasure form, and that form is available for free on my website at www.thelaction.com. Click on the forms icon at the top of the page and you'll be able to get to the listing of all the different forms we offer. So let's start out by, by thinking about what we want to do when we're making improvements. So let's just take an easy example that everybody can relate to. And I like to use examples that are a little bit away from work because um, it keeps people from, from seeing their own processes and what I'm talking about. And you know, sometimes what will happen is I'll, I'll talk about something that might not be exactly the situation that you have, and it, it, can it can alienate some people as, as I start making comments um, about the process. So what I try to do is use a neutral example like this of me golfing and, and take a look at it that way and say, how can I take a, an average golfer and make my game better? So to do that, what I want to do is put a countermeasure in place. And if my game falls off my target, I want to have something that's going to get me back, back on track. And, and the typical version of what people think of when they think of countermeasures is kind of like the Air Force or the the aviation system where the uh, either the the flak or, or the, the the chaff or the, um, the ECMs are all launched out and it helps uh, you know prevent the the aircraft from getting locked down by radar and it basically what it does is it prevents a bad outcome and that's what we're really doing we're trying to put in permanent steps though not just these temporary steps that you use in in an aviation we're trying to put in a permanent step to avoid that undesired outcome. And the way we do that is we create this structured approach. And this helps us solve problems faster, and it keeps us from missing those steps that are going to create issues and errors down the road. So if you go through and you do things um, kind of on the fly and trying to solve problems, you often miss some of the very important root cause analysis steps that are, are critical in laying the foundation for successful resolution of a problem. The other nice benefit about using a structured approach to solving a problem in a, in a countermeasure format is that it improves the communication. So when you go to show somebody how you've gotten to where the, the end result is, you have something that you can show them the process that you followed, and they can see every step of the way very clearly. And not only does it help with the communication, it also makes people very, feel very um, secure that you got to a good resolution because you followed the steps and, and you didn't miss anything. So using that structured approach has um, a lot of waste reduction effects in, in preventing the problems and helping you be more efficient in your, in your problem-solving approach, but it also has good relationship-building effects. I hope you are getting something valuable out of this video. If you want to get more out of this program, we recommend watching it on Velaction videos. You'll be able to watch the entire video, mostly ad-free, and view subscriber-only programs. You'll also have access to a load of continuous improvement downloads. So where do you start? Well. In any countermeasure, you want to use, you know, the whole principle of a countermeasure is you're off the pace, you're off the path. Something is unnatural or un abnormal. And, and the most common place you'll see that in, in the office is 
with something called a key performance indicator bowl or, or some way of tracking your ongoing metrics. And in this case, this, this is again, this is a form that's available on the website, but um, what you see here is a way of taking all your top level targets and bringing them down to just a series of very measurable aspects of your performance in your organization that you can, you can now track. And when you get off the pace on those things, you need to put in a countermeasure. Now in this case, every countermeasure we have is going to be linked up to one of these metrics because if it's not on your countermeasure, if it's not on your KPI, you have to question whether it's something that's important enough to be putting the effort towards. Now in this sheet, what you'll notice is there's a couple of red blocks and these are all the misses. And in your company, you'll probably set up some sort of, of standard on when you would need to do a countermeasure. And I've seen any misses generate a countermeasure, and I've also seen where you have a little bit of a, of a leeway where you have a 5% um, variation on that. So if you, like, if you get below by more than 5%, you start your countermeasure there. But if you're, if you're within 5% of it, you put it in red, you watch it, and you, you pay special attention to it, you start focusing on some of the small things or and, you know, on the fly kind of ad hoc improvements along the way and try and get back on track. But if you stay down there, um, you go on there, or if you have consecutive misses, even if it's within 5%, which shows that you're not getting back on track without some structured approach. So those are two ways to, to look at this and how, how, to, how to manage your misses. Now this is a very important thing to think about with this. A countermeasure, people start thinking about a countermeasure is something that's bad, it's a problem. But the fact is, when you're in an outstanding company, you're going to set a lot of very lofty targets. And these lofty targets are going to be very difficult to achieve. And of course, when you set high, high goals and they're hard to achieve, you're going to miss a lot of them. And because of that, great companies often do a lot of countermeasures. So don't think of a countermeasure as a failure. Think of it as a necessary step in being world-class in your performance. So if you think about even the, you know, the best companies that perform extremely well, you know, even companies like Google and Toyota are going to have metrics in place, and they're going to miss on those metrics because they set very lofty, lofty, high goals that are difficult to achieve. And when you try to be world-class, it's a lot of effort. So a countermeasure is not a failure. It's just a way of uh, identifying a problem and tracking it to get back on track. As part of the lean training system this video comes from, we offer a variety of lean LEGO training packages. These include our Lean LEGO Flow Simulation, Mistake Proofing or Pokeyoke Lean LEGO Exercise, and our Visual Controls and 5S Lean LEGO Exercise. We've also got an Office Flow Simulation for those not implementing continuous improvement on the shop floor. Click the links in the description below or click on cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. So again, what we're talking about here is the countermeasures are very specific at closing this gap. So it's not a way of setting a long-term target or not an action plan to reach your end state. You, know, you should have an action plan on how you're going to track from the start to finish of the year, and your goals should be set based on some real plan. But when you fall off that plan, you want to take a special action. The countermeasures of a special action to close the gap. Now, there's a couple of different tools that are in your toolkit when you start thinking about closing that gap. And one is the, is the standard Kaizen event. And just, just a, a little side note about Kaizen's right now. The, the term Kaizen really means continuous improvement or change for the better. There's a couple of different translations for it. But, in, but in, in the strictest, or I mean the, the most general term for Kaizen, it's getting things, making things better. Slow incremental improvement. Maybe not slow, but you know the incremental uh, continuous improvement to make things better in your organization. Now, it's been an Americanized term where Kaizen has now taken on the same, the, the, it's become synonymous with Kaizen Blitz or Rapid Improvement Workshop or something like that where you're taking a team and putting a team together to make an improvement. And it's, you, know, you, you can use it like that. I like to call that like a Kaizen event or a workshop or something like that. But generally Kaizen you would use, you know, if you're going to translate it, like I said, literally, it's um, any type of improvement. So in this case we're talking specifically about a Kaizen event, you know, when you have a project that you assign people to. And you do that generally when you have a bigger need for speed, when something is really critical or customers are being impacted or something like that. And, and the reason is, is that it takes a lot more resources to do a Kaizen event than to, to manage a countermeasure and make some incremental changes. The second thing is, again, because of that um, focus, the Kaizen event does need full-time commitment. 
So sometimes it's harder to get the resources to do a Kaizen event than it is to just manage a countermeasure in, in, a, in a worksheet that we'll talk about in just a second. Now, a Kaizen event also requires a much broader collaboration because you're now starting to coordinate with other resources and you're having people from different teams, different, different work areas become part of your team. And a countermeasure, especially if it's something that's an internal process only and doesn't affect you know, anything external, then you're going to start having less need for collaboration and it's much easier to make changes without that negotiation. But with all that said, sometimes you will use a countermeasure you will have a Kaizen event as part of your countermeasure plan when you don't know specifically what you're going to do. You may just use the countermeasure as a, as a methodology of, um, it's just, just a method for one of your actions that you're going to take to close this gap up on your countermeasure sheet. So who does countermeasures? Well, there's a frequent thought that the countermeasure is a manager's responsibility, the senior, you know, the, the leaders who, who run the organization. But in, in truth, it's really something that you're, not, you're going to need to have a lot of participation from frontline employees and frontline leaders. Those are the leads and, and the working team members and the, flo uh, the working leaders and the floaters who, who support an organization. So these people all have specific roles, though. And the managers, because they own the metric, they have this big picture view of it. And, and they want to be the ones who are deciding where to put the biggest part of the effort. And they're also the teachers because they've you know, presumably gone through a lot of steps in becoming um, effective at solving problems to get where they are in their organization, they're also the teachers. Now, frontline leaders will actually be doing many of the countermeasures, and these are generally the ones that are more standard and don't have any real unusual problems associated with it, because frontline leaders are often in, in a learning phase of their career. Um, they also are the ones who monitor processes, so they're the ones who are going to be able to step back and watch and see what's going on and, and highlight issues. Of course, team members are in the best position, though, to see problems. So as things start popping up, they're going to see a specific issue. Now, their problem is that they don't have a broader view, so they don't know what's going on throughout the whole team in the same way that the frontline leaders do. So their picture is very small, but they're very focused on what they're looking at, very detailed. And the other thing that team members are really, um, you know, what, what their role in the countermeasure is, is to really support the countermeasure process. And as you need to collect data or need to put in new changes and things like that or come up with good ideas, the team members are going to be a critical, critical part of that, of that uh, process. So the role of countermeasures in Lean now um, really comes from the very top level when you have something called strategy deployment. And that's uh, basically the way of taking what the organization wants to do and cascading it down to where you have individual teams have a specific metric. And if you think about it in reverse, you can look at it and say all these specific metrics that are down at the team level, if they were all achieved, the company would meet its goals. And it's just a way of kind of linking what the company wants to do with what the teams are doing at the front line of the company. So as you have these goals and things set up, you're going to see a daily tracking of those. When you get a good lean company, you're going to start having some daily management in place. And this daily management is a way of looking at processes all the time and watching things in real time and knowing when things are going wrong right as they're going wrong so you can get good data and good feedback. The other part of, of this linking is the operations review. And anytime you have an organization that you're trying to track things on, you want to have good metrics in place and you want to be able to look at those metrics periodically. So I recommend a monthly operations review with a very structured approach and how you do it. And that way you can have the whole team come together. And, and generally what you do is all the parallel organizations under your senior leader will all um, sit in an ops review together and, and then there will be a higher level ops review. So you might have, you know, all of the, the, the uh, you know, a manufacturing director would have all of his manufacturing managers from different organizations and maybe supply chain people would sit in the, on the same ops review. And then the manufacturing director would sit in or the VP of manufacturing would sit in on a high level ops review with the president maybe. And what that does is it makes sure that all the different pieces of the organizations are talking laterally and, and presenting all the problems that they're facing. And often you'll find that crosstalk helps solve problems that may be originating outside of your own organization or that you may be affecting with your problems. But all this stuff links back to your improvement efforts. And again, 
I talked about the daily improvement as is the, the broader term of what you would say Kaizen and Kaizen events and then the countermeasures. So those are the three main ways you're going to go after fixing problems. Um, you also have the big projects that aren't really on here, but those are more often uh, managed at, at a much higher level. These are things like when you're talking about implementing a new website with uh, maybe automated ordering or um, going to a different type of uh, accounting software. You know, things like that are bigger projects that generally don't involve the frontline teams as much. You know, they may be um, consulted, but they're not the ones who are really doing those big projects. And that would be, really be your fourth type of improvement effort. This video comes from Volaction's Lean Training System, which takes a module-based approach to learning about continuous improvement. Modules include a PowerPoint presentation and student guides for every video, plus there are many exercises and quizzes as well. There's also a whole host of supporting content in the form of terms in our Continuous Improvement Companion and downloadable articles. Our modules are currently available in our store and as downloads at Volaction Videos. Click the links in the description below or click on the cards that pop up on this video to learn more. We'll also add links at the end. So, getting specific about this class now, let's talk about the countermeasure form. And I like to think of this as A3 light. So if you're familiar with the A3 problem solving process, this is very similar in a lot of the ways it goes through the methodology, but it really skips the, the snapshot piece of it because you've already established the situation through your, your strategy deployment and developing your metrics. So with all that in mind, you now have, you, know, you should have a clear look of what the current state is because of all this tracking of the metric. But with that tracking, you now have the opportunity to put it onto this countermeasure sheet and solve the problem from the later steps in, in the PDCA cycle. So let's get back to my golf game. When you actually go and take that golf game and try to put it on a countermeasure sheet, the first thing you want to do is fill out the header information. And this header information is really critical. It's often neglected. And things like the date are really important because often these things will start getting archived. And you'll find a lot of uh, materials that you pull out and you won't have the date on it. And you won't remember which one came first. So the date helps you sequence how you've, how you've attacked the different problems. Um, you also want to go and put in a problem statement. And the problem statement should have um, you know, the, uh, the very specific numbers associated with it, and then, you know, what the timeline would be. Thanks for watching this extended free version of our Lean Training System module video. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out at Velaction Videos. If you want to make sure you don't miss the next LTS video that we post, please be sure to subscribe down below. We also always appreciate likes as it helps us get viewed more and makes us keep adding additional content. Thanks for watching and best wishes on your continuous improvement journey.